Praise your holy name. You are faithful. You are awesome. You are amazing, God. Uh, everlasting Father, there is none like you in all the earth. Uh, you remain faithful. Even in our unfaithfulness, you remain faithful, O oh God. Uh, you are the mighty King, uh, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, Father, there is none like you, Jehovah. Be exalted, Lord, forever in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for another beautiful Sunday. Thank you for another time to come before thy throne of grace and mercy and to learn at your feet father we thank you jehovah god we thank you everlasting king we thank you king of kings we thank you thank you for keeping us alive to this very minute many were together with us last week but today they are no more today they are not even alive father you kept us alive to see the remaining half of this year 2024 we've been able to see 20 the first part of the year 2024 and you kept us well you kept us stronger you did not leave us you did not stop being with us oh we continue to be a, a continued work in your hands oh god father lord you said you didn't finish with us yet you continue to work on us you continue to love on us you continue to give us the desires of our heart you continue to protect us you continue to be faithful 
Father, we appreciate you. We love you, Lord, completely, Lord. Uh, just like the song said, uh, Father, we appreciate you. Father, be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before thee tonight. Uh, we shall speak words. Uh, let the words that come out of my mouth, uh, let it be from your own throne of grace and mercy, O God, in the name of Jesus. I reduce so that you may increase in me, O God. Uh, Father, make me your oracle. Uh, speak forth your word of grace and power. Oh, the words uh, that will break every chains uh, in our lives, Father Lord. Uh, that tears of the world shall not be the same again uh, in the name of Jesus. Have your will, Lord. Uh, I destroy and, and I, I destroy and uproot every plan of the enemy. Regarding this gathering, I declare that I shall not stand uh, in the name of Jesus. Every arrow fired at this gathering, I send back to the ascender uh, in the name of Jesus. I station the angels of God at each entrance of every platform that I'm using tonight. I decree and I declare that only the will of God will pervade this atmosphere. Holy Spirit of the living God, take control. Uh, minister to every soul in this place. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I decree that no one shall live here the same way that they have joined. Uh, in Jesus' name, I pray again uh, that no one uh, under the sound of my voice shall live the same way they have come. They shall live with bounty of joy, with bounty of blessings, uh, from the grace from the, from the throne of grace above. Uh, let the windows of heaven open uh, and shower blessings upon every soul tonight uh, that shall listen to this word in Jesus' name. Father, I bless you. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen and amen. I want to thank each and everyone for joining me. Anywhere you're joining me from, I appreciate you. I thank you. You are not here by mistake. You are not here. I tell you, you are not here by mistake. If you are with me on TikTok, please continue to tap, tap, tap. Amen. Tap, tap, tap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Please tap, 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 tap. Amen. I just want to speak a few words. A word of grace. A word of grace tonight. I'm not going to be long at all. I know it is quite late. I'm going to just speak a few words of grace just like the Lord, as the Lord has given me to proclaim to your life tonight. As you all know, my name is Evangelist Dr. Esther Olai in Kadea. I bring to you the word of God from the throne of grace. And it says... Be careful and be mindful the association of who you keep. Be careful, be mindful of the association of the company you keep. Hallelujah. The word of God says in the book of Psalm 100. Let me read to you verse 1. Psalm 100 verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not, that walketh not, in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, or nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is that man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, when we say, what is the counsel of the ungodly? The counsel of the ungodly is the counsel of those that their mindset, their expectations is not with God. Their mindset, their disposition, their life does not include God in it. God is saying be careful of them all. God is not saying that you should avoid it because you still need to reach out and preach to these souls because God has a desire for souls. The passion of God, the passion of Jesus, like you saw him as he was crucified on the cross of Calvary, is to win souls. His passion is to win all those that do not know him yet. All those that are yet to encounter him. All those that are still yet to know about the grace of God, the goodness of God, the kingdom of God, the love that is in Jesus Christ. Uh, the passion of Christ, uh, how God how Jesus will still die for them if he had to do it again. Jesus will do it again for you. He will do it again for me. He's still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. God wants you to have passion for these souls. God wants you to reach out and talk to them and preach the gospel to them. So God is not saying you should avoid it, but God is saying you should be careful. God is saying to you tonight that you should be careful, be mindful, be sensitive to the company that you keep. 
The Bible says that birds of uh, the, 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 the common adage says that birds of the same feather they flock together. God is not saying that you should not sit or you should not talk to them, but God is saying that you should not have common goals. You should not have common goals. Remember that God says that there is power in two in agreement. When two come together in agreement, when one chase a thousand, choose two will chase ten thousand. That is power of two, power of coming together, power of being in joining mind force, uh, forces together with someone. But God is saying to you tonight, He's saying that you should not join forces with the ungodly. You can sit with them to talk to them about the kingdom of God. You can sit with them and talk to them about Jesus Christ. The love Christ has for them. You can be the ambassador of Christ wherever you are. In fact, God wants you to be his ambassador. God don't want you to keep a sealed lips wherever you may be. Is it at work? Is it at play? Is it in a in a gathering? Is it in a conference? Wherever you may be, are you in your bus? Are you in the train? Are you in the plane? Uh, anywhere that God gives you the opportunity to open your mouth and share the gospel, God is expecting you to do so. Because we don't know when that time, that life will end. We don't know whether the time will be up. We don't know. People that died this morning didn't know that they will not be no more by this time. Yesterday, they didn't know. So, God don't want you to keep a sealed list. He wants you to project the gospel, to talk about the gospel, to preach the gospel. But God is saying that be careful, be wary, be sensitive of the company you keep. Company you keep, that means those you are in agreement with. Those that you are in, you have the same outlook to life. Those that you have the same disposition with to life. Be careful. Make sure that you are both of you have the same outlook, the same vision. No, make sure that the people that you are sitting with, the council that you are founded, are those that have the same vision in life. And remember, when I say the same vision, it means that that person or the group of people you are with have put Jesus first. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added unto it. The people that you mingle with, the people that you sit down with, that you play with, that you eat with, that you dialogue with, that you um, reason with, that you, 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 you ruminate with. The people that you reason together, discuss together, discuss ideas, share ideas, are they also putting Christ first? Are they seeking God first? The kingdom of God first and every other thing added unto it. I, again, I read to you the book of Psalm 100 verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated in the way of sinners, nor, 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 seated, nor, nor, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. So God is saying, when you, in this scripture, I'm sure if we read other versions, it will, it, will, it will clarify it to you even more. That God is not saying that you should not sit and preach the gospel to these people. But God is saying, be mindful. Are you sharing the same ideas with the ungodly? Are you sharing the same vision with the ungodly? What has mammon got to do with the children of God? What has light got to do with darkness? When you stand for Jesus... You stand for light. But when you sit with the scornful, when you sit in the seat of sinners, when you dialogue with them, you are sitting with people that despise God. When I say despise God, the Bible says in John 3, 16, He said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That means God, Jesus Christ died for the whole world. Not a secluded kind of people, not a set of people, not a separate kind of people, but God died for the whole world. God died. Jesus Christ gave his life. He had the ability to lay it down and he had the ability to pick it up again. He rose on the third day. He did it for you and I, he did it for the whole world. But it depends on whoever is now willing to receive him. He has paid the price in full. For your sins, 
for my sins. He has paid the price to reconnect all of us back to God. He has paid the price to secure us a home in heaven, eternity in heaven, where we will rejoice and praise God and be in joyful, joyful heart all the time, forever. Remember, there is life after this life. This is just a temporal life. Don't ever forget that you are living a very temporal life. This body that you dwell in is very temporal. It will go, it will end. I don't care how long you live. And you may live up to 80, 100, 120, 140, 200 years. You will live one day. You will leave this body. You will shed it off. And your spirit will go on living. The spirit cannot die. But where will your spirit end up? Is it going to end up in heaven with Jesus for eternity? Or end up in hell? In hellfire for eternity? Choose you this day. So, God is saying that you should guard your salvation. Guard it. Preach to the ungodly. Preach to non-believers. But guard your heart. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Don't sit in the seat of the sinners. You do, there's no, 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 no connection between light and day. They cannot meet. Wherever light appears, darkness must disappear. You are the light of the world. The Bible says that you are the salt. You must learn to know when to excuse yourself. You must know when to exit. When you are in a toxic place. When you are in a place that it's not talk that is ungodly, that is comfortable. You must learn. When you are in a dark, for instance, let me give you an example. When you are in the, in the gathering of some people. Yes, that is a good place to discuss the power of God, the will of God, to discuss the kingdom of God, to tell them about Jesus Christ. When you are in the gathering of people, it is wonderful. It is a blessed thing to do. In fact, it is the will of God to talk, talk to them about Jesus. But in that gathering, when you are being rejected, when you are being talked down, when you are being de de degraded, be careful. When your words, your, your gospel is not being received and is being thrown back at you, be careful. Don't get into an argument. Don't begin to abuse them back, but take your exit. If you stay long, instead of you converting them to Jesus, they may eventually convert you to their side, to the sinner's side. They will teach you how to forget about the kingdom of God. They will give you all the reasons why there is no God. They will give you reasons why you shouldn't believe in all. They, they will call it a fantasy. They will call it that it's in your head. That all this gospel, this Jesus Christ is all in your head. You are just mentally unstable. You are mentally deceived and you are deceiving the world. When you see that you are encountering such opposition, you have given that word. Remember that it is your own duty to give the word. It is the, it is, it is the will of God. It is God's duty to water that that you have planted. The Bible talks about the, 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 the parable of the seed sower. Some we sow in the fertile ground. Some we sow in the rocky ground. So, the one in fertile ground will germinate. The one on rocky grounds, of course, it will die among the rocks. So, it does not mean that you have not sown. You, the sower, it does not mean you have not sown. It's just that you have sown on different grounds and the one that will germinate will germinate. And the one that has fallen onto the rocks is bound to die. It is your own to sow. It is God's own to join it to 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 hit to make them listen and to make it work in their heart. Some have closed their heart to God. The Bible says that some heart God has even given them up to a reprobate heart. Some God has given them up to a reprobate heart. Because God still keep extending that hand of love and fellowship. The Bible says that he stands at your door. 
in Matthew 11. There is stands at your door knocking that whosoever heareth him should open the door and he will come in and sup with them. God is standing at everybody's door. The heart is standing knocking on the heart of every soul. Knocking for them to open up and receive him. It's not everyone that will open it. But Jesus is knocking. It is your own to sow the seed. It is God to water it. Okay? So when you are sowing a seed and you are being rejected, continuously rejected, continuously bypassed, continuously, you know, rejected, then you know that you have done your part. If you stay long, they may draw you unto them. If you cannot win them, you remember the, the, the common uh, adage that says, if you cannot win them, you join them. When you are dealing with the word of God, in the kingdom of God, if you can't win them, you cannot join them. You've got to move back and let it go. You have done your part. You have interceded. You have shared the gospel. You have done the will of God. God said, Jesus said when he was living, he said, go forth and share the, the gospel. And every household that rejects you, shake the, 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 your, the, the, your, the sole of your feet, shake it off at their doorstep and go on. You have done your part. Because I'm saying this from personal experiences. Personal experiences, you are sharing the gospel, you are in a forum, you are sharing the gospel, you are telling, telling them about the will of God, about the kingdom of God, about the love of Jesus Christ. And they keep throwing it back at you. And they keep tearing you apart, tearing your words apart, tearing your testimonies apart. And they, you, you, they keep degrading you in front of everyone so that they can belittle the word of God. They can kill the word of God. Don't let anybody kill the word of God in your mouth. Say it and take your leave. When you see that that is predominantly what is being played there, especially if it is not a platform that belongs to you, it is a platform that you're visiting and you're sharing the gospel and the owner of the platform is rejecting and rejecting, then you have sown your seed. It's time to take your leave. God will water it. And those that are ready to receive him, they will be nourished. There will be a regeneration in their heart. Their spirit will regenerate. And they will give their life to Jesus. But those that are not ready, they will still reject God. But you have done your part. So if anything happens to such a one, if they end up dying, their blood will not be required from you. It is when you, are, you don't open your mouth to speak the gospel, to share the gospel, that God can require of their blood from you. You have to learn to know the difference. You have to learn to know when to let go and let God. You have to learn when to walk away, when to shake the, your shoes at the doorstep of whoever you're sharing the gospel with and take a walk. Don't let them draw you in. You are trying to draw them out of sin. If you're not careful, they will draw you in to sin. You have to know when to take your leave. I continue to read the book of Psalm 1. Psalm 1. And let me go to verse 2. Verse 1, let me read from verse 1. He said, Blessed, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, it, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Your delight is in the law of the Lord. Where you are going somewhere that is killing your spirit, where you are found, keep where you keep bring yourself in a gathering where they keep condemning your God, your testimony, they keep rejecting you, making jest of your God. Then what are you still doing there? Your delight is in the law of the Lord, but when you keep sitting in the gathering of the ungodly, where is your delight? What is your delight in such a gathering? You cannot find the law of God in that. So God is saying that you do not dwell in that counsel of the ungodly. You meditate in the world. When you are in a ungodly, ungodly gathering, you do not have the opportunity to meditate in the world. You do not have the opportunity to share the gospel. You do not have the opportunity to even say what God wants you to say because you have been shut down. Be careful of such a gathering. 
There are gatherings like that. They will kill the spirit in you. They will kill the God. If you are not careful, they will take you out of the fold of, the, of God. They will take you out of the presence of God. And once you go out of the presence, where is your joy? The Bible says that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. But when you keep putting yourself in the gathering of the ungodly, and they end up pulling you out of the presence of God, then you will automatically lose your joy. Because I tell you, in this world, there are trials, there are tribulations. God said, be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. It is in the presence of God that you find joy in spite of the chaotic world that we live in. It is only God that gives you absolute joy. It's, you can only find the presence of, your absolute joy in the presence of God. Where you shut out, you shut out every voices of the enemy every chaos going on every storms of life every problem every challenges of life you shut it down when you are in the presence of god because that is where you find your solace that's where you find your rest that's where you find your victory bible says christ is in you the hope of glory god will not leave you since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken but what is the righteous doing in the gathering of the ungodly? God is saying that once you do not, when you avoid the gathering of such a, 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 a ungodly people, in verse 3 of that Psalm 1 says, And it shall be, you shall be a, like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit, its fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. God is saying that if you forsake, if you, if you, uh, by God, such a gathering of the ungodly, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, because you keep making the presence of God your 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 desire, the word of God your 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 uh, restitute. You keep going in the presence of God. You keep desiring the will of God. The law of God is your joy and delight. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And we know how trees that are planted by the rivers of water, how they flourish and bloom. And it says that its leaves shall never wither. And whatsoever you do will prosper. Don't let anybody pull you out of the presence of God. Don't let, don't let anybody intimidate God out of you. There are so many people out there that know the Bible even more than you do, but they still reject this God. Before you quote the Bible, they will quote it for you more than you. They will quote the Bible more than you can quote the Bible. They know the Bible back to back. They know it from beginning to the end. They will tell you what the, the first uh, chapter in the Bible, the last chapter, what is in each, the verses in each chapter, they have it in their head. But are they um, identifying God in their life? No. Some read it as a novel and they just read it. And you find many of them, even as pastors, as prophets, as uh, uh, teachers, as uh, deaconesses and deacons in churches. Remember, God knows who is his own. God knows. He sees the desire. He sees your heart. God knows who is serving him. He knows if you're serving him in spirit and in truth. And you see, this gathering that I'm telling you that you should make sure that you do not dwell there consistently. I'm telling you, it is also what God is saying about marriage. He said, Two shall, the, uh, the two shall be unequally yoked. That means he's saying to you that you, you can preach the word of God to an unbeliever. But what are you doing marrying an unbeliever? You are not yoked. You are not equally yoked. You, you, are not, you don't have the same vision. You don't have the same mission. You are not heading in the same direction. You don't have the, the same ethics, the same principles. You, are, you don't have the same priorities of life. You're probably not going in the same direction once you get married to an unbeliever. That is why God is saying that do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Don't get married to an unbeliever. 
but God is not saying because some people pre, some people go around and turn it upside down and say, "Are you saying God is saying that you should not be friends to unbelievers? You should not be in their presence? And how will they now get born again? How will they hear the gospel?" That's not what God is saying, and that is not what the scripture is um uh, is signifying to us. What that scripture is saying is, "Don't marry." He's not saying that. Don't sit and preach the gospel to them. Preach. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the word of God. Tell them about the will of God. Tell them about the kingdom of God. Tell them about the love of Christ. Tell them about how Jesus has paid the price for them. Tell them about the blood of Jesus that he has used to redeem them back from the kingdom of darkness into back into the kingdom of light. Tell them. But don't sit there and dwell with them and marry them and sup with them. God is asking you not to do that. It is, if you are not careful, you you yourself will lose your salvation. And the Bible says, what shall it, what, 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 what shall it benefit a man if they gain the whole world, but they lose their soul? What shall be your benefit? What shall be your joy? What? 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 When you lose your soul, when you lose your soul, you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul because you want promotion. You want to sit down with that uh, 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 boss. You want to play the field with the boss. You want to go out drinking and uh, and carrying women like him. You want to be the one to help him even uh, bring in girls for him because you know that he will hasten up your promotion and get you to the top. So because of that, you are going to forfeit your salvation. Supposing God comes knocking today and says, today is the day your soul is needed. And you die in your sins. What shall it profit a man? To gain the whole world and lose your soul. So be careful. Guard your soul. Guard your salvation. Jealously guard it. There's a word of God that talks about jealously guarding your salvation. Before I leave, if I can find it for you. Verse 4 of um, um, Psalm 1 says, The ungodly are not so. The ungodly, they are like chaff which the wind driveth away. The ungodly, they are not stable. They are, they are driven to wherever the wind drives them to as long as they will benefit from it. They don't care if even they are going against the will of God. They don't care if they are crucifying Jesus the second time. Therefore, verse 5 says, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. During judgment, where can they stand? They have no stand. They have no righteousness. They have no stand. Christ is our own stand. Christ is our own righteousness. As believers, as Christians that are heaven bound. So why will we let someone take us away from the love of Jesus, from the presence of God, from our salvation? Why will we lose our salvation because of anybody? Nothing, nothing can compare to what is made above, what Christ has made, has prepared for us in heaven. It, Bible says, ear has not heard. Eyes has not seen. It, it has not even entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared for us in heaven. We believers. It's not worth losing your salvation for. Millions of dollars. Millions of diamonds. It's not worth losing your salvation for. Verse 6 says, I'm reading Psalm 1. Psalm, Psalm 1. I'm reading uh, verse 6 now. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The ungodly is bound to end up in, in, in disaster. The ungodly, you see, I feel so pity when I see people vehemently rejecting Jesus. In as much as God is not, everybody has a choice. God created man with choice. It is only in some other religions that I see that they said you have to accept their God by force. God is not forcing anyone. He has made the provision. He has paid the price in full. He has shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. It is up to you to accept that gift of eternal life. It's not by force. It's not. And 
the when the day of judgment comes what shall be their defense for we that are believers that have accepted jesus christ is has become our righteousness when god sees us because we are man we are flesh so flesh is bound to fall into sin from here and there from time to time but the more we continue to profess our love for christ and give our life to jesus the more god continues to walk on the inside of us and continue to wash away all the debris all the sinful natures that has accumulated in our in our spirit in, in our soul god continue to cleanse our soul from all unrighteousness and then christ comes in on the inside of us and begin to 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 incubate us and begin to energize us and begin to transform us and when god sees us he sees christ in us he sees the righteousness of of christ in us but as an unbeliever when god looks at you he cannot find jesus in you and again i say the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son his only his only his only his only his only begotten son jesus christ have you thought about that as a in the english language pieces that sentence and you will know the gravity of what i'm saying to you it's a choice for you to accept but it is also a fact that what i'm saying is true for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life but who does not believe is bound to perish and they cannot have everlasting life when their spirit man ends up in hell fire that is not everlasting life that is everlasting death remember i told you that spirit cannot die man will die but the spirit of man cannot die it will either end up in heaven or end up in hell when you end up in heaven you have everlasting life how do you have everlasting life by accepting jesus right here on earth and giving your life to jesus when you reject jesus when you say no i don't want you jesus you have rejected the gift of salvation in your life and you are bound you're already a walking dead even though you are walking people are seeing you you are as good as dead because you do not have everlasting life that means when you drop dead one day and you shed off this body your spirit man that cannot die we end up going somewhere and where in hell fire it will end up in hell fire everlasting death with pain and anguish is that where you want to be is that how you want to end up beloved i want you to think it through i want you to think it through and let jesus be a part of your life give your life to jesus nothing is worth losing is what losing jesus for nothing because the owner of your life may come at any time and god god guard yourself guard your salvation be careful in the gathering of who you you sit with be god be careful be careful like the word of god said in psalm 1 chapter 1 verse 1 blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standing in the way of sinners nor seated in the seat of the scornful blessed is that man and the end of it says for the lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish guard your salvation guard your salvation how do you guard your salvation be careful where you go be careful who you mingle with be careful be careful when you are being rejected when you share the word when you are being rejected or you know that the garden of where you are are just ungodly people scornful people and they continuously refuse this gospel that you are preaching to them be careful know that you are there but you are not equally yoked you are not the same the bible says that you are in this world but you are not part of this world you are heavenly bound heavenly made you are a chosen generation you are, you, are, you are royal priesthood you are be carefully created for his glory so whoever you are sitting with and mingling with that is ungodly know that you are that person you are not on the same path share the gospel but remain 
we remain vigilant. We may stand in, in, in your own God. Don't lose your salvation. Don't let anybody shut Christ from you. How do you do? And be, you have to be prayerful. The Bible says in the book, you see, watch and pray appears in many verses in the Bible. That's to tell you how important watch and pray is. God wants you to watch and pray because it is important. If you do not watch and pray, you the spirit, you, you may be slowly, 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 you know, retreating from the presence of God. It is prayer. Prayer. Meditating in the word of God that keeps you constantly in the presence of God. It is prayer that gives you that boldness. The word of God gives you the boldness. So when people are rejecting you or shutting you down from preaching the gospel or trashing you or, or you know, or, 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 or making a jest of you or condemning you or laughing at you, it is that word of God that you have imbibed in your heart that make you to stand still and not be shaking, no matter what it is, no matter how they make fun of you. Rather, you will be the one that will feel sorry for them. Watch and pray. Matthew 26, 4 says, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So you are found Jesus, you are born again Christian, but you are not watching, you are not praying, you are not praying, you are not reading the word of God, you are not keeping you, your spirit man strong, you are not feeding yourself with the fruit of the, the food of the spirit that will nourish you into adulthood. Remember when a child is born, a, a baby requires fresh milk, breast milk. Later on, they, 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 later on they will require, later on they will require, um, um, they, they, later on they will require uh, uh, ordinary milk and later on they begin to eat solid food okay as time goes on they will now begin to eat solid food that's because they are growing they are growing and enlarging and you know and they are they are their bowels, their uh, uh, organs are becoming stronger to break down all the molecules of solid food on like when they were just born. And then when they grow, they can crack meat, crack bones, eat. That's how we, we are when we come before the presence of God. When, when we give our life to Jesus, we are babies. We require the fresh milk of the word. And then that, as we eat it, as we read the word of God and pray and pray all the time, it makes us now to become more and more solidified and we grow into adulthood in God. And our spiritual muscles will be strong. We grow and we are strong and we're able to take in any challenges. That's when we can break bones. That's when the children become adulthood. They can break bones. They can they, they can eat anything they are adults now in the spirit man with god that is when you are able to tackle anybody you become a terror to the kingdom of darkness in the spirit when you continue to nourish yourself with the word of god so pray pray at all times watch and pray be watchful don't let don't be don't walk in don't go don't walk hand in hand with an unbeliever don't head in the same direction with an unbeliever don't get unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Don't go getting married to an unbeliever. Because they will, they may, they may. You may not end up bringing them to Christ. They may be the one that will end up bringing you out of Christ. If you are not careful. Watch and pray. Mark 13, 34 to 37 also talks about watch and pray. He says, and I read Mark 13 verses 33 to 37. Take ye it, watch and pray for you. Ye know not when the time is. You don't know what time it is. The spiritual time. So watch and pray. You remember the parable of the ten virgins? Five were wise, five were foolish. The wise one had extra oil. The foolish ones didn't get extra oil. When the, 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 the groom came for the wedding, the, the lamp of those that didn't have oil had finished. They, they were now begging those that had extra oil to give them oil to, to keep their lamp burning. Those ones refused because they need it for their lamp. And their lamp was keep burning and glowing and burning and glowing as they receive the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Be a wise one. Be like the wise virgins. Don't be like the foolish ones. Mark 13, 33 to 37. Watch and pray for you don't know what time it is. 
you don't know when the the husband the 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 the, 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 the husband will come Colossians 4 2 says continue steadfastly in prayer be watchful in it with thanksgiving continue steadfastly in prayer be watchful in thanksgiving be watchful in thanksgiving hallelujah i want to read this verse to you in the book of luke chapter um 21 I want to read verses 34 to 36. He says, And take heed to yourself, just lest, um, lest any... I will start again. Luke 21 verses 34 to 36. 34 says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you on a wheels. So, if I was reading this from the um, um, the other versions, it's, going, it's talking about, be careful. Take heed of yourselves. Okay? Don't let your heart be overcharged with softiness and drunkenness and cares of this world. You don't know when, we'll co- when God will say time is up. Stay focused on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. 35 says, For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell in the face of the whole earth. Therefore, the key verse I want to take here is verse 36. I'm reading Luke 21 verse 36. He says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. There's nothing more important in life than to stand before the Son of Man. There's nothing more important. Do not dwell in the counsel of the ungodly. Stay away. Speak your truth, which is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. Speak your truth and take your lead. Make sure you're always in the presence of God. Because it is worthy to seek first the kingdom of God first. Every other thing shall follow. The cares of this world are un- unimportant. God said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The book of John chapter 10 verse 10 says, the devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God is saying to you that don't worry, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Don't worry. I have overcome the world on your behalf. I have paid the price in full. So therefore, all your desire should always be to be able to stand before the Son of Man. To be able to stand before the Son of Man. And who is this Son of Man? Jesus Christ. Remember that he came to earth to live in this life for you and I to see and know that yes, it is possible to live a conqueror's life. God shall help us in Jesus' name. So, in essence, what I'm saying to you tonight is be careful, be vigilant, be, be, be vigilant, be sensitive to the gathering of who you keep. When you see yourself in the gathering of someone that you are, you are preaching the gospel to, but is running you down, pulling you down, abusing you, accusing you, trashing you, Accusing you of lying, of liars. I know they are prophet liars. But does that mean everybody is a prophet liar? You know yourself and God knows who you are. And when you are in such, when you are a true Christian, a true believer, and you are in the presence of people that you want to bring to Christ, and they keep pulling you down, it's time to take your leave. Don't push it. Don't argue it. Don't let them trash your God. I've seen it happen in gatherings of where they want to just trash your God. Don't let that happen. Be sensitive. That is not the place for you today. You are a royal priest for the chosen generation. You have been made specially, carefully created for his glory. So you shouldn't be where someone is running you down, someone is talking you down. No, that is not the place to be. Your place, your place is in the presence of the Son of God. 
Jesus Christ. Because he is in you the hope of glory. Continue to be in his presence. Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into that name, Jesus, and is saved. Bible says that the greater one lives on the inside of you than he that is in the world, than, do, than those that are trashing you, rejecting you, belittling you, uh, 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 making jest of you. No. You are a king. You are a king, just like your father. You are a queen, just like your, 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 your creator. Take hold of who you are. Know who you are and take a stand. Stand as the child of the living God. Where you are, the devil must tremble. Unbelievers, when they reject your word, don't worry, move on. That's not the place to pitch your tent. Give them the word and move on. You have greater places to go. God is taking you higher and higher. And you will get there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God be with you all as you have listened. Please share this word. Share this word as you listen. Share, share, share. And God will be with you. In Jesus' name. I love you all. Until I come again next week to share from the throne of grace. Thank you all for listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you.